Good morning everyone. My name is Avin Ong and I'm the Founder, Chairman and CEO of the Fredley Group of Companies. It's an honor to be invited by the Management Association of the Philippines today to talk about how can we be good stewards for the future. But before we talk about how can we be good stewards for the future, I think it would be nice and appropriate to talk about first what is a good steward and who is a good steward in my definition. A good steward for me is someone who takes the lead. A good steward for me is someone who spearheads changes for the better. A good steward for me is someone who inspires. And a good steward for me is someone who takes good care not just of the business, not just of the profit, but also the well-being of its employees as well as the sustainability development of the whole country or the community. As an entrepreneur, I started working or I started my very first business at the age of 7 years old, selling fruit shakes in the wet market of 4th Avenue in Caloocan City. My father died when I was still inside my mom's womb, so life then was very challenging for me and for my family. I would probably tell everyone that we experience poverty firsthand. And I think poverty in general is something every Filipino is quite familiar with because the Philippine economy has been suffering from poverty, unemployment for the past decades. Fast forward to 2014, when we established the Freddy Group of Companies, and during 2017, when we finally brought in Macau Imperialty to the Philippines, we decided to focus our business expansion through the franchising business strategy. Because we believe in the mission that in order to help build the Philippine economy, in order to add value to the Philippine economy, the best way is to actually help build more entrepreneurs in order to help generate more jobs through the entrepreneurs we are building. In just a span of seven years, Friendly Group of Companies now has five subsidiaries, nine brands under its company's portfolio or umbrella, over 2,500 employees, and 250 branches operating nationwide. We are actually very proud of our sustainability development and CSR initiatives. Macau Imperialty, for example, before we brought in Macau Imperialty to the Philippines way back 2017, I think Filipinos are very used to drinking milk tea in a sealed plastic cup. But in 2017, when we finally brought in the brand, we challenged the status quo. We thought of introducing something different. We thought of introducing something unique. We thought of challenging how people look at milk tea in general. So we introduced reusable cups and reusable tumblers for our milk tea fans. I think this is a very good sustainability development initiative because we were able to challenge our competitors in the food service industry and at the same time, we were able to raise awareness about sustainability development through our customers. Before I end my talk today and before we proceed to the Q&A session later, I would like to highlight the fact that everyone can be a good steward for the future of the future. You don't really have to be a CEO. You don't really have to be a business owner. Even if you are just a fresh graduate or an employee of this company or that company, you can be a good steward for the future. You are capable of bringing changes for the better. You are capable of spearheading initiatives and you are capable of taking the lead. Progression doesn't mean you have to be the CEO. Pro progression is all about knowing what you do and why you are doing them in the very first place. You have to find out your whys, you have to find out your purpose. In that way, you will be able to use your strengths and skills and help contribute to the Philippine economy or to the community in general. We hope this inspires you to do better each day and we hope this motivates you to start making a difference. As I always share during my interviews, there is no such thing as perfect timing because the perfect time is actually created by ourselves by knowing what we want and start taking actions by doing it today. Thank you everyone and we hope to receive your questions later during the Q&A.
Donald. Hello, morning, morning, Avin. Thank you for for being here with us. Yeah, thank you for for being with us here. Uh, the, you know, when when uh, we were planning for the Map Next Gen conference, we were thinking of someone who uh, who will take on the cajos on the business side. No, and we okay. we initially thought. Uh, usually we were thinking of uh, going someone corporate, but then we realized that entrepreneur, someone who has uh, moved up the ranks. No, um, can you tell us uh, a bit about uh, Fred? You know, what are the different brands that you have? No, of course I know Macau Imperial. I'm a fan, uh, but uh, uh, what are what are the brands that you have? And how old were you when you started the business? Okay. Yeah. So first of all, thank you so much for having me today, Donald. Yeah. So um, congratulations, by the way, to to Ma. Yeah, on a very successful event. Uh, friendly group of companies started way back 2014, so that was seven mm -hmm. years ago, and I started this company at the age of 22 years old. Wow. Yeah. So um, <laughs> to give you a brief background about my entrepreneurial journey, um, I actually started selling fruit shakes at the age of seven years old in a wet market in the wet market of Fourth Avenue in Caloocan City. Yeah, so um, life then was very challenging. So we had to work very early in order to help contribute financially to, to my family. Yeah, so um, fast forward to, um, to college. I graduated from Dallas Hall University. And right after graduation, I started working as a business area controller with Deutsche Bank. So um, before um, becoming an entrepreneur, I was actually an employee in the corporate world. Yeah, so I started working um, as a business area controller with Deutsche Bank Group for three years. And then after that, I decided to resign from, from Deutsche Bank and started my very first restaurant in Quezon City, um, 2014. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I, I built my very first brand. Um, that The name was Sandaya Yakiniku in Fisher Mall along Quezon Avenue. And then later on, we were invited by um, a Singaporean agency they invited us to bid for the franchise rights of Shabu Shabu Ichiban from Nagoya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so of course, um, um, knowing that we only have one restaurant and then we got invited, it was it was actually uh, I was actually very excited, you know, to fly to Nagoya to undergo the the bidding process and experience everything. Yeah, so luckily we got the franchise rights of Shabu Shabu Ichiban, so we were able to aggressively open four branches in just two years. Yeah. And then later on, um, we, we found Macau Imperial Tea from Macau, China. So we decided to talk to the franchise or we became more aggressive. And then we brought in the brand last 2017. Yeah, so um, currently um, under the company's portfolio, we have Amitasu Yakiniku concept. Yeah, it's a Yakiniku concept. We have Nabe Japanese Isakaya and Hot Pot. It's a Hot Pot concept. We have, um, of course, Macau Imperial Tea with over 224 branches operating nationwide. Yeah, we recently acquired 100% shares of New York Fries and Dips. We recently brought in um, Liang Crispy Roll all the way from Shanghai, China. Yeah, we recently opened the second store of Liang in Banawe. And mm -hmm. um, we are actually bringing in brands from Paris as well. It's Cafe Kitsuni from Paris, France. Yeah, and we also have an international buffet in North Etsa, the name is Hosaku International Buffet. Yeah, wow. so these are actually our brands, yeah. Wow, very nice. Then that's a very, very, uh, very strong growth huh? uh, from, from 2014 uh, all the way up to up to this year, no? I think one of me, my pressing questions, even personally, I, I own some restaurants, but uh, this pandemic has been very tough for, for all of us, no? Uh, how do you how do you cut through? And I, I saw on your Facebook you're still opening more stores, right? So how did you survive this pandemic? And you've been very aggressive, no? Uh, why is that? Uh, were you not affected? Um, definitely we are affected. I think um, everyone is being affected by the pandemic, by the ongoing pandemic. So um, in order to survive, what friendly group of companies is doing is to strengthen our digital presence. So, of mm. course, when, when the pandemic took place last year, um, everyone was required to just stay at home. Yeah, so to make sure that our products and services are still available to all the customers, to all the Macau Imperial fans out there, we made sure that they can easily order our products online. Mm. So yeah. instead of just being so dependent with you know, our delivery platforms such as GrabFood, 
or Food Panda, we even created our online store, our own delivery platform, and we came up with a lot of promotions, a lot of campaigns to give people that sense of normalcy. Yeah, so um, that's one. And in the case of um, Mitasu, Yakiniku, and Nabe Jamalis, mm -hmm. Isakaya, and Hatpad, we know very well that these two concepts, when we talk about Yakiniku, that's Ihao Ihao, and Shabu Shabu, of course, mm -hmm. they are very experience dependent. I mean, you have to go to the restaurants in order to, to experience Yakiniku and Shabu yeah. Shabu. So yeah. I think we, we did very well in terms of innovation, in terms of changing the game, because we imported a very budget-friendly um, portable griller and portable hot pot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it costs you um, 400 pesos, and we send you that portable griller or portable hot pot together with your orders to your house, just so you can still enjoy yakiniku and shabu shabu <laughs> at the comfort of your house. Yeah, so mm -hmm. all these initiatives were done um, in, in the first six months of the pandemic, actually. Um, and how about your employees? Uh, when some of them uh, were, were the, did you also let go of some? Do you reorganize the organization? Uh, are these in companies all independent or, and uh, separate? Uh, and do you have different shareholders? How do you manage also the employees? You know, because I'm, I'm sure uh, a lot of restaurants, especially I was talking to some restaurant groups, a lot really had to let go of their employees. How do you, you know, how do you took care of them during the pandemic? Okay. Um, we have different shareholders for different brands. Honestly, um, that's yeah. the most difficult Correct. part um, yeah. on my end. Because, of course, um, being the CEO, I have to do manage up and manage, manage down. So I have to make sure that my investors are also happy with the business yeah. performance. Although um, we can always use pandemic as an excuse. But at the end of the day, we're doing business. And profit, at the end of the day, is quite important to every investor. Yeah. So, um, of course, constant communication is very important. We, um, <clears throat> we, help them, we help them understand what's going on and we give them or we share with them our plans for the future, how we are going to shift to the new normal to basically um, give them more confidence about the business and how we run or manage the business, that's one. In terms of our employees, we're actually um, happy to share with everyone that we never um, let go of anyone during the pandemic. But of course, given that um, there are restrictions in dining in, we had to um, give them more day off or we have to lessen their schedule. Yeah, mm. so that's what we did to make sure that uh, we will all go through this together. Yeah, um, we also provided financial assistance to all the employees of Ready Group of Companies. We released our 13-month day in advance, the prorated 13-month day in advance just so we will be able to help them survive. Nice. And um, to also share with you, Donald, um, just a few months ago, we decided to purchase um, 1,700 doses of Moderna vaccines because we're going to mm -hmm. vaccinate everyone in credit group of companies, wow. including our franchises and their employees. Yeah, so there are actually a lot of initiatives going on during the pandemic, whether it's for the customers, for the investors, or for the employees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very nice, huh? Uh, so uh, tell me more. No, I saw in your presentation you have some CSR efforts. Uh, yeah. What have you been doing to help the community also? Okay. So um, back then, when I was an employee of Deutsche Bank, I was actually inspired by Deutsche Bank to do a lot of CSR initiatives or CSR works. Yeah. So um, when I was an employee, every Friday I would file my leave and go to the Aroceros Park in um, mm. Central Station of Manila mm. and teach the street kids how to sing, how to dance, even though I don't know how to dance. Yeah, I still teach them how to dance, how to sing, and a lot of things, yeah. So um, it's something I'm so passionate about. So when I finally established my own company, the group of companies, I decided to continue the street education program here in FGC. So um, we also have this I am different, I am able campaign. So this is actually a very interesting campaign because all the branches of FGC nationwide, we require them to employ at least one person with disabilities. Mm. So um, the I am different, I am able campaign is basically a campaign um, realizing or recognizing that even if they are different, we believe that they are able and capable of contributing to this company. So we employ them, we give them jobs, 
and um, we actually want to inspire all the other entrepreneurs out there to do the same. To do the same. Yeah, so um, these are some of our initiatives and we also provide scholarship to our um, employees' um, children where as long as um, you are top one or top two or top three in your class, you can actually reimburse the tuition fee of your kids. Yeah, nice. so these are the initiatives we've been doing for the past three years. Wow, okay, that's very nice to hear. Uh, what as a CEO, uh, you have such a big group. No, you're, you're, it's a growing group and it's uh, rapidly yeah. growing. How do you how do you manage your time? Do you go around to each of them? Do you stay in the office? How do you get a what's a what's a normal day for you? Okay, um, normal day for me. <clears throat> I usually start my day at around seven a.m. So um, I would usually every every time I I get interviews by by different magazines, I would probably share my advice to all these entrepreneurs that uh, I start my day at around 7 a.m. Yeah, so as soon as I, as soon as I, as soon as I, as I start my day, I would check my emails and my calendars. And in fact, a day before, I would already plan my schedule ahead. So um, what am I going to wear tomorrow? Yeah, who am I going to meet and everything? I usually plan ahead before sleeping just so I don't have to think of all these things when I wake yeah. up. Yeah. Mm. So when I wake up, I check my emails to make sure that um, I know what to do today. Yeah. And I usually go straight to the office or sometimes to the branches or to attend some of my meetings with my lessors or with the malls. Yeah. Um, I don't usually stay in the office or I must, I, I probably, I would probably tell you I don't like staying in the office. Yeah. Because um, I like talking to people. Yeah, so um, I would usually stay in the office for like two to three hours and then later on I would go to my meetings or I would probably go to the branches and talk to the staff in order to know what are the problems going on in the organization. Yeah, so um, sometimes I also go on vacation, but you know, as entrepreneurs, um, every day is a work day for you. So even if you are on vacation, um, it is a must that you respond and you still continue your work um, outside the office. Yeah, so um, my day can be very stressful. Sometimes I start working just like yesterday. We started work at the at 6 a.m. and we actually finished work at 12 midnight. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, I'd like to <clears throat> encourage everyone to ask questions, whether if you're on Facebook or on YouTube or in uh, uh, in the Echo Hub, feel free to, to throw in your questions. Uh, to Abino, who's our uh, who's our featured uh, business speaker for for today. No, so again, I I, I find it just just so fascinating when I found out no when you started uh, your business at such a young age, uh, and I think you're just uh, below thirty. So it's uh, it, it's uh, uh, it's 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 so, it's so interesting no to and and to grow it at this uh, speed and scale. No, I think that's that's a challenge. No. So I'll, uh, I, I have a uh, question coming from the audience right now. Uh, so the, the question is, uh, what were the challenges you faced you know, as a, a young, young entrepreneur? Was there ever a time you felt like you were underestimated by your peers just because of your age? Yeah. So what were the challenges? I can probably share with you um, one of my experiences. Um, back then, 2014, when I was meeting my suppliers, because at that time I was just running one restaurant that was Sandaya Yaki Miku in Fisher Mall. So um, when I invited my suppliers to go to my restaurant to have this meeting because we're gonna do some price negotiation, mm -hmm. um, I actually heard one of the owners um, talking to his account manager, and it was his comment. Um, sabi niya, um, siya ba talaga ka meeting ko? Parang yeah. high school graduate pa lang siya. <laughs> yeah, so, so of course, sometimes when you look so young, when you're still young, um, yeah. people don't find you convincing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, there's nothing you can do about it but prove yourself. Yeah, so for mm -hmm. me, there's a lot of hard work. Um, even during construction meetings, when I started in the restaurant industry, I had no idea about PVC pipe. I have no about no idea about PVC flexible. I have no idea about all these technical terms that they were talking about during construction meeting. So it was very difficult for me. Um, it was very pressuring for me. But I think the best way to address challenges like this is to make yourself become better. And mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of research that you have to do. Um, you have to run faster in order to learn more, um, in yeah. order to don't look, look stupid during meetings. Yeah, so yeah. that's how we, that's how I do it. 
Nice. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question uh, uh, from the audience. How do you maintain quality of products uh, and service and your level of service amidst the expansion? You know, I remember even last year pa, pag Macau Imperial, ang haba ng Grab driver sa labas eh. Yeah. Right? And even you, yes. you really have to line up, no? So how do you ensure that the, uh, the product and the quality is up to your, you know, your standards? Okay. So um, this is one of the most challenging part of doing franchising. Yeah, making sure that um, quality and service is consistent. Yeah. So um, number one, constant communication with the franchises for me is very mm -hmm. important. So every time we have new product launches, every time we have new promotions, we make sure that we communicate through memorandums and we have fiber groups with them to make sure that whenever they have clarification, dark clarifications are concerned, we get to address them immediately. <clears throat> and then another thing is we have an audit team for Macau Imperial team. So there are actually um, around 10 auditors going around nationwide to make sure that all the branches are serving all these Macau Imperial tea drinks the right way, um, even the service. Yeah, so um, constant communication, that's one. And we do our audit to make sure that everything is, you know, up to the standard of Macau Imperial Tea. And every time there are customer complaints, honestly, online, we, we actually give so much importance. We call the customers, we address their concerns immediately to make sure that we fix all those things that are not, um, not good um, using the standards of Macau. Yeah. Uh, where's your farthest branch? in the Philippines. Are you based wow. already in uh, Mindanao yeah. already? Um, yes, we do have branches in Mindanao, but I'm not very good in geography, so I'm not <laughs> sure what is the farthest <laughs> branch in Mindanao. But yes. I believe we, we have branches as far as, um, I'm not sure if it's far enough, but it's in um, um, Cagayan de Oro. Yeah, so that's yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The, one of yeah. the farthest. Good yeah. Enough. yeah. 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 Wow, so we okay. have um, three branches in Cagayan de Oro, and yeah. even before the pandemic, um, before the pandemic, and even during the pandemic, every time there are store openings, I always make sure that um, I visit the branch. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we visit the branch, we talk to the employees to make sure that whenever you know I I, I have interviews like this, I know very well how the businesses work, yeah. and I can also share with you some of the numbers and data. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have another question from the audience from Ms. Mambuts. Hi, Boots. Uh, Garcia, how do you ensure sustainability of your food concepts given the propensity of Filipinos for uh, new things, no? uh, which will eventually wane over time? No? So, tama, no? I think that's that's a very valid input. Like, uh, Filipinos are fans of novelty items and eh, no? No, novelty products. So, how do you ensure that it's always you know being sought after year after year? Okay. Um, with that, we give so much importance to research and development. Yep. Yeah, we do our R&D almost every day. But of course, when it comes to launching the new products, we do it quarterly. So um, as early as 2019, we, we recognized that we cannot just rely on the best seller of Macau Imperial Tea, the cheesecake and pearl milk tea. Mm. So we started our R&D. We work with a lot of chefs and suppliers, even in, from Singapore and Malaysia, to make sure that every quarter there is always something new that we can introduce to the Filipinos, to the Philippine market. Yeah. Mm. So apart from the new drinks that we we launch, um, we have also other tumblers. So recently for Macau Imperial Tea, um, we partnered with um, Warner Brothers for the We Bear Bear series. Yeah. So um, now our cups, um, you'll see We Bear Bear characters in our cups. So these are the R and D efforts that we've been doing. And in the case of um, our Yakiniku restaurants, um, just like what I mentioned earlier, we introduce a lot of take-home sets, just so you don't really have to go to our restaurants to enjoy Yakiniku and Shabu Shabu. Yeah, so um, we we invest a lot in R&D, even for our um, Liang Crispy Roll and NYFD. Um, we have a lot of plans for it. And even if these are franchise, no? uh, the, these yeah. innovations do not come from the head office. You, you do it on your own already. Yeah. Um, we do it on our own because um, the head office, let's say from Macau or from Shanghai, they don't really yeah. understand the Philippine market. Yeah. yeah. So um, usually um, we would get their inputs, but most of the time we do it on our own with the help of our suppliers locally, as well mm. as um, the chefs of our local team. 
Nice, very good. Okay. Okay, we have uh, another question, uh, again, from a good friend, uh, uh, Maria Jocelyn Lim. You know, uh, Mr. Ong, uh, what do you think is the most challenging hurdle uh, in dealing with the uh, Philippine government business requirements? <laughs> do you have suggestions <laughs> on how to make it easier to deal with the identified challenge? I think I think there, there are many. I would say, I would believe they're from the city level, LGU level. I mean, all of the business owners would face the same. Same also as you move up. And now that you're a big enterprise, Again, I think your challenge is really growth eh? from small to big in a, in a short span of time. Yeah. Um, I have to be more careful when it comes yes, to Yes, yes. I don't want to get into trouble also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, so I think it's very important that we plan ahead. Usually one of the, one of the challenges that we always encounter is prior to the opening date, our yeah. business papers are not yet out. So yeah. um, I, I, I always get concerns na parang, sir, hindi pa kasi nare-release yung business permit. Yung BIR 2303, hindi pa lumalabas. So I think it's very important to plan ahead. So this is mm -hmm. something about project management. So yeah. if you have already identified your opening date, it's actually very important that you plan ahead, yeah. Um, yeah. complete your requirements in order to have your permits released in advance. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. And um, another tip that I can probably share with everyone here would be you should have a very good relationship or connection with the Philippine yeah, government. Yeah. So even with your LGU, so you know, um, we have to make papi usap. Yeah, even if we, even if whenever we approach them, we have to be um, mabait. Yeah, we have to, we have, to, you know, in in the Philippines, means it's important to be medyo malambing. Yeah, so mm. we need to talk to them. We need to communicate to them our concerns. And that way, it can be, um, they can make our lives easier then. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, we have a lot of uh, questions coming in now. Uh, do you yeah. think, a, from Josefino Paloma, do you think a hybrid restaurant uh, business model is the way to operate under a new normal? What do you see as the moving forward ratio between online and in-house orders in terms of revenue? So I'm sure before, uh, like most, I think in my experience, you have a 90-10, no? 10% online. And then yeah. slowly, no, as this pandemic, it suddenly flipped, no. Do you see that? Do you, what What is your personal uh, view of that? Do you see that as the new normal now? Okay. Um, allow me to share with you something because we do our business review every week. Yeah. So um, during our business review last Monday, according to the marketing team, there's actually a shift in terms of um, consumption between walk-in and food delivery. Yeah. So before the pandemic, of course, um, when during ECQ, um, it's 100 percent sales from GrabFood and Foodpanda and all the other delivery platforms. And later on, during M uh, during MECQ and GCQ, we started seeing around 10 to 20 percent walk-ins and 80 percent uh, food deliveries. But it's very interesting that um, we are seeing growth for walk-in customers the past few weeks. So I think people are getting more and more comfortable of going back to the old normal, um, going to the restaurants, enjoying their food, enjoying their drinks. So to answer that question, um, I was actually talking to this uh, to my team last uh, yesterday. Um, I feel like by quarter three of 2022, we will be back to the old normal by around 80%. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm quite confident with that because they always tell me back, um, in the Philippines, we always tell people Filipinos are very resilient. So um, I think we're seeing that in the food service industry. And I'm quite confident that um, in by, by the next few quarters or by next year, we're going to go back to the old normal by around 80%. And, and therefore, the in-store sales would, would go back also? That's what yeah, yeah, yeah. For the dining customers, yeah. For the dining customers, okay. So here's a well, here's a related question. Uh, what is your view on cloud kitchens now that restaurants, uh, real estate is such a shaky investment? Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, we tried investing in a cloud kitchen for some of our brands like New York Fries and Dips, yeah. but um, it doesn't work when it comes to uh, quality control. Yeah. Of yeah. course, um, you cannot have so many cloud kitchens. So in yeah. our case, we had our cloud kitchen in Roosevelt and we, our press release or our promotions was um, we deliver um, 
to different major cities of Metro Manila. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, the problem with cloud kitchen is that um, it will affect the quality of your food. Yeah, so sometimes um, customers get disappointed because of the mm-hmm. quality change um, after delivery. After delivery. Yeah. yeah. So um, I feel like customers or Filipinos in general would still prefer dining out. Yeah. So um, I feel like um, cloud kitchen would only work if you have different sites or if you have at least one cloud kitchen per city. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But in the case of Macau, to be honest with you, we don't need a cloud kitchen anymore because of the number of branches. So yeah. technically, we can, we can serve every city. Um, we don't yeah. have much problems with that. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, one question from uh, AC Sabino. Uh, uh, are you are you also taking into consideration not, not given that uh, your your milk of course your your flagship is now the milk tea brand? Yes. Uh, are you taking into consideration the current buyer's attitude towards health, or are you planning to have products that would cater to people who are health conscious? I don't know if there's oh. such a thing as a health conscious milk tea. I would love to. There have is. That. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There is. Yeah. So um, this is a good question. This is a very interesting question. Mm-hmm. Um, during the pandemic, we actually launched the Malung Dai series. Wow. Yeah, so, okay. yeah, so we realized that you know people are becoming more and more health conscious. Mm-hmm. Para, oh my God, it's pandemic. I have to drink more vitamin yeah. C. I have to take this yeah. and take that. Yeah. So um, even milky, even diet, um, they, are, they are more conscious. Yeah. So because of that, and thought relating this to our R&D efforts or innovation, we decided to launch the Malungay series. <laughs> so the Malungay series is actually milk tea with Malungay and uh, milk with Malungay tea, and yeah. it's actually very it's actually very delicious. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Um, yeah, so we promoted this. Um, yeah, we had we had this Malungay series nationwide. We launched this nationwide. And um, we, we got really good feedback from the customers. But you know why, to be honest with you, even with the Malungai series, I can still see customers um, getting our bestseller, the cheesecake yeah. number. I mean, yeah, they still love that. Yes, of course. Well, milk tea is still milk, milk tea. But, yeah. but I find it weird if you drink milk tea and then you want to be healthy. Although, of course, yeah. Uh, I really like, I, I would like to try. I'll, I'll try your Malungai series. Very interesting. Yeah. But you yeah, balance I think it. I yeah, a um, milk tea in general is not unhealthy. You just have yeah. to drink everything naman moderately. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, but uh, what's next for you? I mean, uh, if you look at uh, currently the state of uh, pandemic, hopefully it's almost over, and you're saying that there's now a that we're going back to 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 like before, hopefully, right? Before pre-pandemic yeah. state, right? Do you do you see yourself uh, uh, opening more uh, brands? No, I'm um, opening more brands, uh, franchising more brands globally, or starting your own franchise and creating your own brands, uh, or 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 do you think uh, again delivery Delta will be the way to go? Uh, what are your thoughts moving to the future? Yeah, so um, we are confident that by Q3 of 2023, we will most probably back to the old normal by around 80 percent. So with that, um, we actually have a very aggressive goal that by end of 2021 we should have around 250 branches operating nationwide. Yeah, wow. so um, this is for Macau. Yeah, because currently Macau has around 224. So we plan mm-hmm. to open um, 26 more Yeah, to, to, to achieve okay. the goal of having 250 branches nationwide. And likewise, for our New York Rice and Dips and Young Crispy Roll, we plan to open at least 100 branches for each brand by end of 2022. Yeah. So um, that's also, uh, we've been working with these major malls to, for our expansion plan, and we hope to make that happen with the help of my team. And um, we also have this aggressive goal of going IPO by 2025. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So of course, when it comes to business model, it's still through franchising. Like I said earlier, during my video, we want to empower entrepreneurs and use these em- entrepreneurs to help us generate more jobs for the Filipinos. Yeah, that, that's the way to go it, to grow fast through franchising. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, basically that's all. Yeah. Nice. How many franch? What's your ratio right now of the, your franchise to store uh, company owned? Okay, um, franchise outlet is around ninety percent of 
the whole Thank business. you for your uh, Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So we own around twenty. We own around twenty branches. Yes. Okay, so it, at, at the very least, at least we know, right? People trust your brand. That's why yeah. you know they're, they're all franchising uh, 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 with you, no? Yeah, it's uh, actually interesting to share also, Donald, that um, some of the franchises they own mm -hmm. or manage uh, a lot of branches, and yeah. it's a good sign for us that they are happy yeah. with the franchise because yeah. they start with us with just they started with us with just one branch, and then later on they they ROI early and they wanted a second branch, third branch, and so on. So even if 90% of our franchise uh, uh, of our branches are franchised, we only deal a few. Uh, we only deal with a few franchises. Few. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's very interesting. So you know, most of the franchise I would assume would be uh, geographical. Like maybe a franchise you would take on the entire Cebu. Is it is that the case? Uh, we used to do that, but um, we we had problems expanding through area development mm -hmm. franchise. So later yeah. on, we decided to just individual yeah. franchise yeah. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah and do you have a like a geographic boundary like a, a Macau Imperial has to be uh five like a five kilometer radius among each other or, or rules like that yeah we do um there's a certain kilometers that we follow and mm. but of course the exception would be the malls you know sometimes you'll see an SM and an Ayala <laughs> that's yeah. so close to each other yeah, and of right. course the market is different so we allow them to operate and usually there is this um right of first refusal so mm. we have to offer it to the franchises nearby if they right. say no that's the time we offer it to someone else nice okay that's nice okay well one question again from uh, miss boots uh if you did not become an entrepreneur uh what would have been your career post-graduation wow that's a that's a very that's a very challenging question um <laughs> or voila that's not even an option to go no. it. um when I was a kid, I mm. wanted to be a doctor. Wow, okay. Yeah, so I wanted to be a doctor. But, um, you know, coming from a blue-collar worker family, yeah. I could not afford studying for like yeah. 10 years or 15 years. So True. that's why even before marching, I started my first job now with Deutsche Bank. So yeah. going back to that question, if I did not become an entrepreneur, probably I would continue my job as a banker with Deutsche Bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then it's very interesting. I, I feel kasi parang for, for you specifically, because of your background, it's like entrepreneurship is in the blood because of, yeah. you know, I think it's maybe it's in the genes also. Uh, and also later on, because of the circumstance, you really yeah. want yeah. to go out and earn for yourself rather than, I mean, a banker, I, I would yeah. I would assume the, the salary is not that high, uh, especially yeah. at an entry level. Yeah. Um, to share, um, for the past, uh, for the for that three years with Deutsche Bank, I always get comments from my mom. You have to mm. resign. You have to resign because you cannot you just be an employee forever. And then that's yeah. how they push me to resign and you know build something on my own. It's a uh, Chinese thing, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. That, same with me, but uh, but I didn't follow. I'm not uh, as obedient a child. So <laughs> I stayed in corporate, no, and doubled only a bit in some businesses. Yeah. No, but I think I'm. What you know, where you are right now, you have so many. You have so many business. I mean, that uh, I'm sure when you started, the gro the birth pains and the growth pains were very hard, and you have to rely on a lot of your partners. There, there's a school of thought that they would say that uh, you don't partners, uh, you don't uh, have your friends become your business partners. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because mga away now, you you get to into disagreements, no, or you know each other too well. What's your philosophy there? Do you do you have friends who become your business partners? Honestly, no, I don't have friends who become my business partners. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I started Freddy alone, um, and I got oh. investors from from my sisters. So basically, my sisters were my investors, but mm -hmm. they were not managing or they were not part right. of the management team. Yeah, so that's how we do it. So um, I would say, I would probably say I'm quite lucky because um, mm -hmm. we don't have much conflicts or we did not encounter so much <laughs> conflicts with my sisters or with my business partners because they gave me that freedom to, to do things on my own. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah. And um, partnering with friends, I think that's doable for as, for as long as you make things clear since day one. 
Yeah. Yeah. So the roles and responsibilities, who has the final call, what would be our setup. I think all those things are very important. Hmm. So beyond the Macau Imperial, do you intend to bring in more brands to the country or you will just focus on Macau Imperial? Oh, um, Macau Imperial, we, we have plans of opening up to 400 branches in the Philippines. Yeah. But yeah. Um, currently, we are more focused on expanding Liang to Spiegel and NYFT. Because ah, so for that, Liang, yeah. we, we, we just recently opened, so we only have two branches operating. So mm. we plan to have 100 branches by 2022 and same as NYFT. Yeah, and okay. um, we are actually in talks with another Korean brand because we intend to bring in more brand as part of our goal to go IPO by 2025. Wow, I think yeah, <laughs> very fascinating. You're 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 very definite, even in your timelines, right? Yeah, <laughs> 25 by doing this. Uh, but you know, as an entrepreneur, I I'm always taught that you have to have lagging. I don't know. You have the nose. How do you know which brand do you franchise or which concept do you start? Oh, um, this one, I would say I'm a little bit stubborn. Yeah, um, <laughs> for as long as I love the brand, yeah, I'm okay. passionate about the brand, I would take it, I would do it. Yeah, so, okay. um, so um, probably no people would say, there's no yeah, science. Um, it. <laughs> oh, there, there's no science, I must say. Oh, although, of course, iba pa rin yung research ka and everything, but I don't do that. Oh, if it's something I love, if it's something I'm passionate about, I would take it because I want to do something I love doing every day. So if it's a brand I love, I don't mind working from 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to 12 midnight because it's, it's yeah. a brand I love. Yeah, that's one. Um, although may mga failures then, of course, because of that. To be honest with you, I feel like the Philippine market is never ready for Shabu Shabu. Yeah, yeah. we are having a hard time, you know, convincing people na Shabu Shabu can be your food. Every week, <laughs> if you ask if you ask ten Filipinos, um, when do you eat shabu shabu? They would probably yeah. tell you, ah, pag umuulan, pag yeah. ako. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. But that's not yeah. how we eat shabu shabu in Japan or right. in China or Taiwan. Yeah. So there are also difficulties when it comes to you know launching all these brands, especially if Filipinos are not very, very are not very familiar with all these brands. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. Well, maybe maybe as we as we end this, maybe. Can you give some advice to your uh, uh, twenty-year-old self again, uh, especially for budding entrepreneurs? No, uh, what they need to work on, focus on. Uh, you know, before, like any business. No, uh, for example, like uh, like my father. My my father is a businessman. He became a businessman because he didn't do he didn't uh, he didn't pass the CPA exams. No, he was an accountant, but he didn't pass a CPA exam, and that's why he became a businessman. No, but that's a bit old school. Diba? Yung mababa sa, their grades are low, they become businessmen and actually become very successful at that. No, but times are changing. No, and and I think uh, maybe with your uh, experience and expertise, no, uh, what would you advise? And also, uh, you know, I'm very sure how do you balance again? Let's going back to the topic of being a good next gen CEO, which I think you are. Uh, how do you balance again the the, the people, the profit, the, the, and also the planet? No, um, I really like what you mentioned about uh, about the uh, uh, disposable cups. No, I mean the yeah, simple yeah. things are the things that matter. You don't have to have a, ex, ex, a big campaign to save the earth, but the every day when you churn out the, these uh, cups, that's only uh, not the environment. So yeah. how would you? Um, what would you? I mean, what kind of advice? Go ahead. Yeah, I'll probably start answering your last question about um, about sustainability development. To be honest with you, Donald, you also inspired me um, mm -hmm. during the during the Agora Awards yeah. when you yeah. mentioned the five P's. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. Perfect. Yeah, wow. So right. that one, uh, yeah, I can I can relate to that yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think one of the reasons why I'm very passionate about all these CSR initiatives is that um, I grew up as a scholar. So it's yeah. very important for me to give back to the community because I know very well that there are a lot of adding who, who need who need help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's one, that's where I'm coming from. And another thing is I want friendly group of companies to be a company or a group of companies that we can pass on, pass on from generations to generations. Because yeah. the name Fredly actually came from the names of my father and my mother, Alfred yeah. and Shirley. Okay. Yeah. So I want them to be remembered. Okay lang, hindi ako maalala, but I want them to yeah. be remembered. Yeah. So I want everything to be sustainable because I want this company to be 
pass on from generation to generation. Yeah, so those were the two motivations or key motivations why we are so focused on CSR as well as sustainability development. Mm -hmm. And then going back to your probably last question, my advice to my 20-year-old self or to all the entrepreneurs out there, um, it's very important. Three things are very important for me. Self-discipline, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. business with integrity, and hard work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. so um, I always tell people that we live in a world full of distractions. You know, mm -hmm. instead of working, um, whether you open your Facebook more or Instagram, yeah. you are constantly distracted by all this, all this application True. or people True. around you. Yeah. True. So you have to surround yourself with good people who can help you achieve your mm -hmm. dreams and your goals. Yeah, you have to discipline yourself even if no one is watching you. Um, if you are disciplined, you will be able to get things done. That's one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, business with integrity is very important for me, especially in the food service industry. You know, um, I've encountered a lot of disappointments when it comes to mm -hmm. dishonest mm -hmm. acts. You know, yeah. we, we all know that, no? So for me, we just have to do the right thing. We just have to do the right thing even if no one is watching us. Um, yeah. That's very important because um, your credibility as an entrepreneur is your asset. It's an important asset. And sabi right. nga nila, um, trust would take you years to build, but mere seconds to break. So please take good care of your um, credibility yep. and yep. please do business with integrity. And lastly, a lot of hard work. I think yep. um, yun talaga yung secret to success. Um, yep. If you don't know anything, just like me, 2014, I don't know all these technical <laughs> terms. You just yep. have to do your research. You just have to yep. talk to people. You just have to talk to Donald, for example. <laughs> yeah. So you have to talk to experts. You have to talk to really good people in order to learn faster, in order to run faster, and you just have to work harder. Uh, you know, I like it. Uh, thank you, Avin, for your time. You're really a a, a good uh, embodiment of a good next gen CEO. I really like your nuggets of wisdom. You don't even have to say you have to do well in school, right? But but uh, yeah, it's it's all it's all the basics, right? A lot of self discipline, uh, integrity, right? And at the same yeah. time, your hard work. And rest assured, you will go far. And that actually is an equalizing factor. Anyone can do that. Anyone can be that. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, again. Thank uh, you. Good next and CEO, Abin Ong. Thank you, Abin, for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Bye, guys.